Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Welcome to another build. It's freezing outside, no ice on the ground and everything. So I'm in the shop messing around. And I originally wasn't gonna film this because I'm building something for me, but I've never seen one like it. And I thought maybe someone else could, could take the idea and build the same thing. I have this space between my miter station and my storage lockers. I've already started building a French cleat tool wall out of some cedar that my good buddy Jared gave me. And this turned out real nice. But I want to turn this into a sanding station with some integrated dust collection, some downdraft dust collection. But I don't want this station to only be for sanding. I also want it to be a mobile assembly table. So what I'm doing is I'm building a, a table that has holes in it that the dust can go down in and over to the vacuum. But also I can use the same holes for dog hold downs. And I'll show you that in a bit. So this is the original top for the massive table that, that I built that, that was not joined well. And so as I, I went ahead and finished milling it down and you can see how thin it got. It even got so thin that I was into where I'd uh, cut the holes for the biscuits. But it's nice and flat now. I'm still doing some sanding on it. And over there on my saw horses, I've got a couple of legs that I've put together or glued and biscuited together. Those are gonna be the legs. But the way this is, the way this works is, I'm going to drill a, a whole bunch of uh, three-quarter inch holes in here, evenly spaced out. Underneath will be a, a tray that has an angle to it that goes over, and it'll have a, a port for my vacuum over here. And then the dogs are uh, clamps that that have a little um, straight part that goes down in the hole, and as you clamp them down, they pull tight. So I'll be able to use this for sanding and for assembly, and it'll be mobile and I can move it around the shop. All right, so I'm gonna take my trim router. Uh, I'm gonna put a quarter inch round over uh, on the edges. But a quick little tip on using a router, if you don't know which way to go with it, you take your right hand and you make an L. If you were pushing this way, the direction of that L or where you're pointing is the direction that you should be going. That being said, I'm gonna go the opposite direction on the first, uh, on the very ends because by going backwards, it'll eliminate the tear out or the, the wood chipping off on the end. So I'll do the, the little bit on the end backwards and then I'll push it this way for the rest of it. These holes are marked every three inches square, and that turned out to be 13 across and seven tall. And I'm not great at math, but that came out to 91 holes. What have I gotten myself into? Using my homemade drill press and a three quarter inch Forstner bit, I started drilling holes. Years ago, I worked for a guy that when I complained about it being cold, he said, son, the warmth is in the tools. And he was right. Luckily, I ran out of holes before I ran out of clothes. Finally, the one I've been looking for, the last one. All right, holes are all drilled in the top. It's not perfect, but I'm not building it to sell it unless one of you guys really want it, and then I'll let it go for the low, low price of a decent drill press. However, I wouldn't have been able to drill those holes on a drill, a regular drill press. Um, I had to use my special one that drills through and I could slide it around. On with the build. I put a quarter inch round over on every hole to smooth out any jagged edges and use the track saw to cut them to length. Future build, a track saw that will cut all the way through an inch and a half. Using a flush trim bit, I cleaned up the little edge that the track saw didn't cut through. No fancy joinery on this one, just some pocket holes to hold the legs to the top and it was glued and screwed to the bottom of the top. 
Makes sense, the bottom of the top. That's a weird saying. Using that fancy new table saw fence, I just started cutting random angles until I found the one that worked. Turned out it was 14.753, but I just rounded up to 15 degrees. All right, so it took a little bit of figuring, a little bit of cutting and recutting and cutting and cutting, because I don't do math, so. Uh, but I put an angle on here so that I can create a trough and then I'll drill a hole in this end right there at the bottom of the trough that I can connect my, my uh, vacuum to. So hopefully it all works out well. I'm gonna have a half inch MDF panel in the bottom just because that's what I have left over. I haven't spent any money on this project. I don't plan to, um, but I'm gonna keep building. More pocket holes in the side runners. So I need to seal up the inside because I want all of the air to flow through the holes, not flow through the gaps around the, the sides. So I'm going to use this caulk to do this. And I will tell you guys that never have I been more careful in pronouncing the letter L than when I asked the guy at the hardware store where I could find some caulk. Then I had a special visitor, my 10 year old Adeline. A moment earlier, and I would have had an awkward time explaining that caulk joke. Funny enough, she thinks I'm creative, and she needed help writing a story for school. So as I continued the build, we wrote a story about Elena the Voodoo Queen. Turned out the story was pretty good. I expect it will be published soon. Look for the audiobook version everywhere that 8-track is sold. I cut these little strips of half inch MDF and mitered the ends and then glued and brad nailed them so that I could slide the other panel in. I've got one side on it. I've got these braces on here to where when I cut this side, I can slide it in there, glue up the same, and then put some more uh, brad nails to hold it in. But this side, I want to cut um, a hinged porthole in because like I said, I'm going to use this as a as a assembly table as well, um, and inevitably I'm going to drop something through one of these holes and not be able to get it out of there. So I'm going to to create a little hinged lid where I can open it up and get in there and clean out any sawdust or anything to get stuck in there, or you know, a socket, or I don't know, hundred dollar bill if I drop it in there. I want to be able to get that back. So next up is creating that piece. Silly me, forgot to record cutting this with a jigsaw, but I used a mortise bit to cut a quarter inch rabbit on this half inch MDF panel. Because my mortise bit rounded the inside corners of the rabbit, I used my belt sander to round the outside corners of the door to match. And at my router table, I cut a quarter inch rabbit in the door so that it would sit flush in the hole cut in the panel. created a jig out of some scrap in order to use a pattern bit to clean up those jigsaw lines. And that is a very satisfying fit. I never throw away old hardware. I found a couple of screws and an old hinge that I could use for the door. Then pre-drilled the holes and screwed it in by hand so I wouldn't strip out the screws in that MDF. A little bit of glue, slid it into place. Sure, I'm glad I put this handle here. Pulled it tight with some clamps and then Brad nailed it down. So the Lord does provide, even when we didn't know that we needed it. 
Uh, last weekend when, when we were up at Aunt Laura's house, when I went down to the creek, I found this piece of inch and a quarter PVC that somebody upstream had been using for water, I suppose. But it washed out and was tangled up in some trees and I grabbed it and brought it home knowing that you know, I recycle as much stuff as I can find. This is gonna work great for the, for the vacuum system on that part. Uh, my neighbor provided this out of his trash pile, whether he knew it or not. But this is part of an old shop vac, so I figured vacuum system, shop vac hose, work great. But this won't quite fit in there even with a little bit of sanding, so what I'm going to do is heat that up and expand that. I'm going to have to do the same thing on the other end for, for my vacuum to be able to connect to it. I'm going to use a heat gun, heat this up uh, till it gets uh, pliable or flexible. Shove this in there and let it sit for a little bit, and then I'll glue it in. Work like a charm. That, once that cools, that piece is never gonna come out of there. It's got a good, nice tight seal too, which is fine by me. Just wanted to point out, you guys can uh, alter or adjust PVC just by heating it up a little bit. Just be careful, it does get very hot. Using an inch and a half spade bit, and resting my giant noggin against it. I measured and then measured again and then promptly drilled the hole in the wrong place. So I used the jigsaw to make the hole even bigger. And used a scrap piece of MDF to hold the tube and make sure that everyone knew this was a man's workbench. I used a table saw sled to cut these tiny pieces because I have a great relationship with my fingers A little bit of hand sanding to get them smooth as glass. All right, so I got the the door latch fixed on there. This is walnut that my buddy that gave me the the cedar gave me this piece of walnut said that I was going to love it, and he was absolutely right. I like this stuff. My saw likes it too. But anyways, the way it works is. And this is upside down, obviously, but I'll be able to open the little door, clean out whatever I need to clean out, and then it it's kind of beveled to where it pulls it down tighter as you close it all the way. So if I need to put a, a piece of weather strip underneath here on that little, um, in this little rabbit, I can, but I don't think I'll need to. So it's time to put the wheels on it, put this guy on the floor. All right, just slid right into place. I am gonna put a shelf uh, across here so that I can put my little drill press under there uh, and my belt sander and all that stuff, but I don't have the lumber for that right now. And I've got it connected. And then that runs underneath, all the way underneath all my scrap lumber and pops out right there. So I'll be able to put my vacuum right here where it goes so now I've got my vacuum here where it's going to be. I can connect it to the back of the router table. Or right now I've got it connected to the pipe that goes over to the sander. In the future, I'm going to run another one that goes to underneath my miter saw right here and then build a shroud over it to catch all the dust. But for now, it's connected to the sanding table. I do get a, have to get a light to put up here. It's kind of dark over here if I'm doing small stuff but i'm gonna give it a test run nothing like building a tool building a table to use it while you sand the top of it so i can put some polyurethane on it but first to test the power i use this piece of plywood to blank off some of the holes and this thing really sucks Sacrifice one of my $2 six inch um, F clamps from Harbor Freight. And the way this way I cut the end, of, uh, the end of it off. And the way this works is they go down in the holes and as you tighten down, it kicks the shaft sideways. 
and allows it doesn't allow it to pull out and you can tighten things down pretty tight with that that so i'm going to do that with a few more of my clamps probably just two uh, would be good if i find the need for more i'll just cut another one off but that worked pretty well too um on the polyurethane Unlike some people I know, this bottom shelf created with the remainder of that tabletop made this thing really beefy and stable. All right guys, finished table. So I added the rest of that tabletop down here and on the back so nothing would slide back behind it. My drill press, uh, my belt sander, which I'm gonna build a stand similar to the drill press to where I can use it without clamping it to the table. Top turned out pretty good. It's got a few blemishes in it that I didn't finish sanding out. And then the, my biscuit hole back here that I left in there as a reminder that, you know, even though we may start out as one thing, the Lord may have other plans for us and turn us into something else. Not really, I was just too lazy to fill it, but it sounded good. So I got my two dogs cut and ready to use over there. Everything worked out great, connected to the vacuum. Uh, the one thing that I did want to say was because there's so many holes and the, the flow is not great, I can blank off half of it with a little quarter inch piece of plywood or, you know, anything, piece of plastic or something and, and increase it over here. But I did notice that there's airflow over all the holes, so it will work. And uh, I'm excited about it. So if you guys like it, hit the like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.